Okay, AP Calculus AB, Second Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. This is, I think, a really easy example, uh, but more importantly than the fact it's an easy example, I think, honestly, it's an example you're most likely to see on the AP exam. So I hope you'll stay with me through the whole thing. If not, if you get bored with my voice or my artistic ability, please just skip towards the end of the video because I want to make sure that you can find the critical values and that you can graph based on this. Okay, so we're given this function, little f of x, right? Little f of x, and we're asked to evaluate f of 1, f, uh, big f of 4, big f of 6, and big f of 8, right? Parent f of 1, parent f of 4, parent f of 6, and parent f of 8. And I want to remind you that this is an area question, isn't it? So in here, this, this is just defining this and saying this is, the, uh, this is the area of this function, this unknown function here, from 0 to any x value. Okay, so let this be some constant value here. So this is all we're going to do here. We're just going to find the area, and I'm just going to find it in the simplest way. The first one is f of 1. So I'm just going to look at this without having an equation. How would I find this? I just do it geometrically. I'd say, okay, let's pretend for a second that I'm a really good artist. Um, that this is 1, and I want this area under the curve. Well, the first thing I'm going to say is that f of 1 is definitely going to be negative, and it's negative 1 half base times height. Well, the base is 1, the height is 1, so it's just negative 1 half. It really is this simple, just looking at the geometry of it. I'm going to do the same thing for f of 4. Now for 4 here, we can see that this whole thing is negative, so now we want this total area under the curve right here, don't we? So I'm asking you to look at that and figure that out, and it would be the same thing, 1 half base times height, remembering that we're under the curve in all places here, so it's going to be negative 1 half base times height, which is 4 times 2, or 2 times 4, depending on how you want to look at it, would give us negative 4 as our area. I, I really get the uh, <clears throat> ridiculousness of the idea of negative area, but there it is. f of 6 is not so dissimilar, but what you're going to see here is now we're looking at this whole area, and this is really key for you to hear, that now we're looking at this area, and we're going to see, we want this area also. So now we have negative area and positive area. So what we're going to do is add those two areas together, and we know that from 0 to 4, the area is negative 4, isn't it? right? Plus 1 half base times height, so 1 half base times height, and the base is 2, and if you go back up to the graph and look, the height was 4, so well, that would be negative 4 plus 4 for a total area of 0, okay? All right. Now, I had one more I wanted to do. I want to do this, this one. If you have questions about how to get that done, please um, send me your comments, but what I want to do right now, hold on one second. I hear my kid at the door. Okay, sorry. So here we go. So we're asked to find the critical values. Here, this is all I'm saying. Do you remember this is little f, right? This is a derivative function. And when we read derivative functions, anytime that the y values, anytime the heights are less than zero, it means of the parent function, the slope is less than zero, otherwise known as negative, right? So we know we have negative heights. Look, we have negative heights here. This is People get all confused. I see that this is a negative slope, but that's not what I'm measuring. I'm saying all the heights are under zero, and they're also under zero all the way to here. Do you see what I'm saying? So I know that on our function, why don't we just graph it right here? On the derivative, on the function itself, I know that this thing has a negative slope. So I can say that. I can say, you know what, this thing has a negative slope from somewhere near here. 4, right? Here's, here's 4 right here, right? And then from 4, right, all the way up to 8, which is where we stop, we have an increasing, right? How do I know that? Because I see here on the derivative function, on the derivative function, that all the y values of the derivative function from 4 to 8 are positive. So the slope is positive. Here's 4, and from 4 to 8, we know that we have positive slope. And from 0 to before 4, we have negative slope. All right? Hope this is helpful. I really think this is the kind of stuff that you're going to see on the exam. I hope you're practicing. I hope you're looking for a lot of problems that, that look like this. Right? Okay.
Wow, that was really tricky, wasn't it?